What's up YouTube? Jeff back from Sammy Guru here and today another very exciting Samsung video for you. And uh, One UI 7.0 has finally started rolling out pretty much to every eligible flagship device, even a lot of mid-rangers. And as more people are getting the update, people are getting angry. Um, if you've been on Reddit, you've been on Twitter, you've been on any social media, if you've been on my own channel and read the comments, you'll know that a lot of people really hate this update, as you can see here by a lot of these comments. And I'm gonna go through a few of them. You guys probably saw I posted some stuff on X, some funny ones, there's some really funny stuff. This guy said he doesn't want the phone anymore and is gonna to move to Motorola, which is hilarious because Motorola never updates anything, <laughs> including security updates. So I, I find it very, 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 very strange to say you're gonna to go to Motorola or Google or anything when they, in my opinion, they're all inferior to what Samsung is putting out. But I do understand that some people have some things that are bothering them. And today I'm gonna to try to solve some of those issues in this video. So before we get started, make sure you check out the website, samiguru.com. We have lots of great written coverage over there, tutorials on how to do some of these things as well. You can check back every day for up-to-date Samsung news. If you're gonna purchase an upcoming Samsung device like the S25 Edge, Z Fold 7, or Z Flip 7, you can get a free case cleaning kit, desktop phone stand, put in your phone number, your email, or both. We cover all the shipping costs. This is US only because of course, the shipping costs would be very expensive internationally. All you have to do is use our affiliate link. That's how we fund the entire program. That'll be in the pinned comment description if you guys are interested. And so, like I said, going back to this, you know, you kind of read through my comments. This is the video I made about first 10 things to do, which is done very well, but some of the problems that I keep seeing people mention, I mean, just saying the UI sucks is not something I can really constructively respond to, but there are some questions that people have about putting some things back, how they might want them that I wanted to address. So I have a keep list here as usual. We're gonna go through some of these. Some of them are things that I did cover before, but some of them are things that I have not. And so it should be interesting, hopefully helpful for you guys. So the first one, merge quick panel and notification panel. Lots of people have complained about the fact that if you swipe on the right, you get your quick settings, you swipe on the left, you get the notification panel. They wanna combine them like it was in the past, One UI 6.1. Go ahead and hit edit here, panel settings, Go ahead and tap together. And uh, you can even see here, edit top quick settings to decide which ones you want at the top like you used to be able to. You can choose from all of these different available buttons. Now there are a couple of buttons here that they actually removed, um, which I might make a separate video about because some people have complained that a few things were removed. There are some ways you can add some of these back, but a few things have been removed from this panel, but you can still edit your top six. So once you put these together, and exit out, hit done. Now you're going to have everything together. No matter where you swipe, it's gonna be there. Now, personally, I mean, I like the new design. Uh, I've kept it separated. I've gotten used to it. A lot of the ways that people, you know, other OEMs have implemented this, I was not a big fan, but the way Samsung has implemented, I think is actually pretty nice. But if you do wanna go back, you can easily go back to the old version where they're combined there in the quick and notification settings. Uh, edit quick panel, a grid and finding past options. I just showed you one of those where you can edit the quick panel grid once you combine them, but you can also edit these things right here. You can tap this, you can also drag it down, um, add more buttons here from the bottom. And you can also drag this down to make it longer directly in the quick panel. You can also move these panels around, right? So some people I think aren't necessarily aware that you can do this. You can get this to your liking however you want it to be organized. Now, the one thing I know that a lot of people want to do that you can't do is for now, you can't really delete any of these panels. It'd be nice if Samsung would give that option. Right now, that's not an option, but if we give feedback, you go to the Samsung members forum and give feedback. The moderators there really do listen and it's possible maybe with One UI 8 even, they could add something that makes this a little bit more customizable to your own liking. Like I said, anything that you don't like the option to go and buy a new phone, in my opinion, is not a good one because Samsung puts out the best hardware. They also really are the most timely outside of Google with updates. Go and give feedback because they really do listen. And the Samsung Members Forum is a great place to do that. I'll drop that below so that people can, you know, go ahead and do that. If there's something that I can't address, if it's not something that can be fixed or put back to the way you like it, you can go and leave feedback. Uh, icons missing in the status bar and the battery icon change. The battery icon, I agree, does not look good. Mine's on 100 right now, but it looks even worse when it only has two numbers in the percent. It also changes size as you swipe down. It goes from bigger to smaller. Um, Samsung is reportedly going to change this or tweak it with One UI 8, although it still doesn't look great in my opinion. Right now, there's nothing you can do about that, but if we give the GoodLock team some feedback, maybe in a future update with GoodLock, 
they can allow you to fix this. Now, as for the Bluetooth and the other icons like NFC, they only show when you swipe down. I know some people don't like that. Right now, there's really not a whole lot you can do about that um, because Samsung has decided to remove them from here. Previously, you were able to do something about this by going into Good Lock and you could edit things by using the Quickstar module. But even if you play around with things in Quickstar right now, this is the visibility of indicator icons, you cannot change these. You see, even if you turn off, for instance, if you turn on Bluetooth, which I have here, it doesn't show on this view, only when you swipe down does it show those icons. So I've already provided feedback to the GoodLock team and Quickstar. I definitely think this is an option where we definitely need the ability to tweak both the battery icon and change how it looks, perhaps make it a little more readable. Some people find it not to be very readable right now. And I would agree in certain instances. And then also make it so you can view these and tailor them to your liking, because there's a lot of wasted space here. Um, Samsung just said they did it for a clean look, but there's a lot of unused space where we could show some additional icons. So I am with you guys on that is a little bit annoying. Now let me move to cover this one first. I've seen this one a lot. People say they don't like the now bar at all and they wanna get rid of it. Well, you can get rid of the now bar. There's not a way to disable it all at once, but you can do it in two step procedure. What you can do is go to the lock screen in AOD, go to now bar, and then down here, you can simply turn off basically everything you see here, you can turn off all of these features, just get rid of all of them. And then obviously if you're on an S25 device, you can turn off the now brief, turn off the current mode, and then you'll be good to go. In fact, we also, you know, you can also, if you're using the AOD, I don't have my AOD on right now though. Let's turn this on just for these purposes. If you're using AOD, you also wanna make sure you go in here and turn off show now bar on the AOD settings and then you'll be set. So once all these are turned off, essentially all the content that it aggregates is no longer being shown. So you shouldn't see any now bar on your lock screen, on your always on display or up here in the live notifications. It should all go away. Now, I do like the now bar. In fact, I love the now bar feature, but I'm gonna turn mine back on so I don't forget. But that is something that you can do if you don't enjoy the now bar. Another complaint I've heard about the now bar and live notifications is that people don't get sports notifications from Sports by Google. Well, if you go into Sports by Google, there's a couple of things. You have to have the settings turned on to follow a particular team or league and also turn on personalized search and web app activity. So you can check this by tapping here on Sports from Google. Make sure you're following some teams. You can see here I'm already following a lot of teams and you can follow additional teams from right here as well you'll see all the teams that you follow when you first tap it. If you're not following any teams, you need to follow teams or leagues for them to show up. Now, once you've done that, make sure you go into your personalized search and make sure that this is also enabled here. You can see I have it enabled and web app activity, which is also under customization. And you can see that I also have this enabled under my Google account. If you're missing one of those, then you may need to also reset some settings. And we wrote a written tutorial on the website. It's a little bit longer. Huge shout out to Larry who helped us out with this. I'll drop it below, um, but there is a way to kind of troubleshoot this. I haven't seen any recent issues with the May update for S25 devices and the most recent S24 update. This seems to be working now as long as you enable these things that are under the sports from Google settings, but you can also try that longer tutorial if you're still having an issue. Lots of people complaining about Gemini now being the default when you long press the power button. Some people had previously had their power off, you know, menu set to that button. Well, you can still change it very simply. If you hold down your power button and your volume down, you're going to get your settings here. Go to side button settings. And then under long press, you can easily change this to Bixby or the power off menu. Uh, under digital assistant, you can also change it to another eligible one like ChatGPT. But there's even more you can do. Not only can you switch to Bixby or power off menu from here, if you have good lock, you can actually go to the registrar module of good lock and change this to an even more robust set of things. Let me actually find registrar, there it is. You can change it to even more options, not just Bixby and not just the power off menu. You can edit the side button entirely by just turning it on registrar. Now you've got all these different things, screenshot, flashlight, auto rotate, show recent apps, open a particular app. Uh, now, if you turn this on, it does override the standard side button settings we just showed. And I personally, again, I like Jim and I have been using it quite a bit, um, but you can do this and you have a lot of options with Registar if it's not something you enjoy, if Jim and I is not something you use. Uh, next up is the persistent location indicator and battery life issues. 
Now, a lot of people, I made a separate video about this, but a lot of people are under the impression, so when you unlock your phone, let me just show you, when you unlock your phone, you go up here, you're gonna see this green indicator. If you tap it, it says you're being used by system apps almost all the time when you unlock it. And you see these Google Play services and some other system apps up there at the top. Now, this does not mean it's really draining extra battery. You see it goes away after a second. This really is because Samsung made it more obvious when system apps are using your location in the background. These apps have always used location in the background. You just weren't notified. You were only notified if like foreground apps were using it. That's when you would see the little green indicator on old versions of One UI. So this isn't necessarily draining more battery, but if you are having battery issues, there's a couple of things you can do that I recommend that I've talked about in previous videos. One of those is if you go into device care, you can run your device on performance profile light, which gives you uh, better thermals, better battery life in general. I run my device on it a lot. This will give you better battery life for sure. Um, you can also go into your optimization settings, make sure you have auto restart turned on to auto optimize your device. Uh, I do it once a week at 3 a.m. on a particular day. And then the other thing you can do, which we made a short video tutorial on right when One UI 7 came out, is to clear the cache partition on your device. Anytime you do a big update, it's just a good idea to optimize things and make sure everything is working properly. So I would recommend that as well. Whenever you do a big update, things can always get slightly messed up. That's just the nature of Android, but that's the price you pay for freedom and all the customization that we have that iOS users don't enjoy. So those would be my suggestions. The light performance profile, uh, make sure that you are also using auto optimization every you know, week to do an automatic restart, and then also clearing the cache partition just to give that a shot. It should work pretty well. Uh, I've had, really had no battery life issues. Mine hasn't been any worse uh, on my S24, my S25, even my S23 since getting One UI 7 and taking these steps. Uh, up next is to get the larger music widgets and other app widgets back. So this also requires a good lock module. So if you go into good lock and you download Lockstar, which is this module, Lockstar is now editable from the lock screen as well. But what you'll able, and so once you install it, you can actually go to the lock screen. You can long press here and then go here you'll see Lockstar show up right there when you long press and go to app widgets. So people were saying they don't like the now bars music player, it's too small. Well, once you enable Lockstar, you can get all widgets from every app. So you can go to your Spotify widget, for instance, and I can grab my large Spotify widget and I go ahead and throw that right back on my lock screen. So you can see now, there I have it. You can move this, you can tap on it, and make it larger, make it as big as you want, whatever size you want on the lock screen and place it right there. You can also change the transparency, play around with that, and get your large music player back. So you can save that. I personally find the now bar sufficient, but if you want that really big widget right in the middle, you can do that. Samsung removed the option to get all the extra widgets when you tap the time, but you can now have widgets right below the time and place them anywhere on your lock screen with Lockstar. So you actually have even more freedom, in my opinion, uh, but you can definitely get that large music widget and other widgets back if you want. Uh, grid size issues. This is one that Samsung really needs to fix. Some of the widgets, especially the first party widgets in One UI 7, they are not optimized for alternative grid sizes. You guys see that I have the five uh, apps across. So when you long press here, go to settings, you see on the home screen grid, I have the four by six home screen grid. That's what I'm using on the main grid. But if you change this to five by six on the main grid, it creates a lot of weird spacing issues with widgets. Right now, there's really no way to mitigate this. You can just choose the widgets that look the best or allow them to be stretched out. Bixby in the back is uh, on my speaker and thinks that I'm trying to ask her a question. Anyway, this is an issue that right now can't really be resolved other than just, for instance, using Home Up from GoodLock and using the new DIY where you can freely place everything. But in terms of stock settings, it's really best to use the four by six in terms of the main grid. You can still enable five at the bottom, um, but some of these first party widgets in One UI 7 have some kind of issues and the grid isn't optimized for that. So One UI 7 was supposed to fix this, but it's not fully fixed if you choose an alternative grid layout. Um, you still need to use the default one or use Home Up if you want to kind of freestyle things. Hopefully they'll fix that more with One UI 8. Um, poor memory management issues and lag. I definitely recommend clearing the cache partition. That's one thing. The auto restart I talked about earlier as another thing. 
But also if you go into device care uh, and you go into your memory section, one thing you can try is you can try to turn off RAM plus or go down to the two gigabyte option. You can see right there. So you can turn this off, which you need to restart. So I'm not gonna do right now. A lot of people have it to eight gigabytes by default out of the box when you install One UI 7. Uh, Ice Universe, who's a very popular Samsung leaker, said he tried two gigabytes because that actually uses the minimal available. Because apparently even if you turn it off, there's three gigabytes reserved for RAM plus, which I find very weird but I did test that and it does seem to be true. So what you might wanna do is to try to turn this down to two gigs. Uh, I tested it and it works pretty well. Uh, again, you do have to restart once you make this change. So to clear cache partition, uh, have that auto optimization on where it restarts automatically, change two gigs on RAM plus, and uh, that should hopefully help you with some of these poor memory, memory management issues, any hiccups that you have with One UI 7. Call screen changes and recording. So a lot of people ask me questions about call recording and if this is always enabled? The answer is no, it's not. So call recording is not enabled in every call automatically. You have to turn on the call recording from the call screen. Um, and of course, recorded calls can then be transcribed automatically using transcript assist. So if you wanna turn that off, just tap transcript assist and then turn that off directly from here and it won't automatically transcribe your calls. But there is no automatic recording um, to where it can record every time because that's not necessarily something that complies with certain regulations in various countries. That's why Samsung was finally able to bring this to more regions because they implemented it in a way that complied with a lot of those rules and let them you know, get this you know, certified. So one thing that also people have said about this is they would like to turn off the notification that the call is being recorded here in the US. Uh, it reads a notification to the person you're taking a call with. You cannot turn that off either for the same reason Samsung wants wide applicability and wide compliance with various laws and regulations. I know not all laws and regulations require that, but enough of them do, and Samsung wants this to comply as widely as possible. Uh, the last one that I've heard is people talk about missing features. Um, when you go into the Galaxy Eye menu on your model, you may not see all the features that are listed here. For instance, audio eraser, photo ambient wallpaper, now brief. A lot of these are exclusive to specific devices. For instance, the S25 Ultra, obviously, that I'm using now has everything that you can get. But for instance, photo ambient wallpaper, audio eraser, and then the now brief are not available on other models. The now brief, not available on anything but the S25. Audio eraser is available on the S24, but not on the S23, etc. Now, the good news is in One UI 8, if you're looking forward to the now brief and you want that, Samsung is bringing this feature that kind of aggregates all of your content, gives you AI recommendations and summaries in one spot. This will be coming to other devices with One UI 8 later this year, including the S24 and the S23 series, and we've already reported on that over at Sami Guru. Now, I know I answer everyone's questions. I'm sure there's still some things that are making you angry. I aggregated the ones where people were complaining the most about a specific thing and hoping I could try to address whether or not it's possible to fix it. Uh, of course, you could fix some of these things by rolling back to One UI 6.1, which a lot of people have asked me how to do. That's not easy to do. You need to unlock your bootloader. You need to have a little technical knowledge um, to use Odin and downgrade your software. You could do it theoretically, but it requires quite a bit of technical know-how and likely you're going to end up voiding your warranty. If you don't know what you're doing, you might end up breaking your phone as well. So I'm not gonna show a tutorial on that, um, but you know, if you really cared enough, you wanted to do it, you could find it on the internet. Anyway, if you guys have other questions, drop them below. I'll try to answer as many as I can. Appreciate you guys checking out this video. Again, make sure you check out the website, samiguru.com, for more great written tutorials. I'll drop other tutorials like Clear Cache Partition, uh, the Google Sports uh, tutorial we did on the site, and a few other relevant ones we have did in written form. Check the site daily for more great Samsung news content tutorials. I'll see you guys in the next one. Thanks so much for watching.